pal. No, no way. So, how do things go together? Normally, we just put them one on top of another. But in curves, which is what the substructure of particle physics is all about, down in the nanos level of life. Come on, get in here, you dirty rat. <laughs> All right, we're starting to go. Okay, let's try again. Oh boy, no glue, no staples, no nothing, no tape. Let's go ahead another one. Beginning to look like a lotus flower. Every religion <laughs> and spiritual organization has always talked about the light. Yeah. We are the children of light. The lotus, it's all there. When you get that's what Don proved to me today. When you get down to the area of reality of truth, you're gonna find the same thing. If you get down far enough to find the one elemental solid that's smaller than all the rest, you're coming up with this. You ain't coming up with anything else. This is it. I know you're not supposed to make claims as a scientist. You know, I don't want to make big claims or anything, but I challenge anyone in the room to come up with a regular solid smaller than this. I was taught you, that sphere is smaller. When I'm done, pal. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> you want to go deep? You know, if I throw this at you, right to your arm. <laughs> so it continues and continues and continues and continues until you get a whole sphere. Now let's take that sphere, which is completely described, and bring it down to this big. No, smaller than that. Now we start, because we know the synergy of the light is still moving. It's, it's following, it's, it's because of the curves, it builds up momentum. Remember someone was talking about it goes on curves and stuff like, and that curve gives it momentum? Well, that's how the light has the force to keep going. And it doesn't take a lot of force once you got it going, because we know it's just, Just a little bit. And it conforms. From a tetrahedron, you use this curve. When you got to an octahedron, you use this curve. When you get to the icosahedron, it's more of a curve because it's being compressed. The core of this, I call it a Mickey ball. You've heard of the Bucky ball? Yes, of course. Right, that's the Mickey Full, ball. Yeah. Bucky's got this big fives and sixes filled with nothing. <laughs> Mickey's got it filled up. <laughs> <laughs> and in the core, this was created. Now I could call it an icosahedron, but I'd be wrong because it doesn't fit the definition, so I've had to rename everything. This is really an icosatrine. <laughs> I got trines and I got trexes. And I got trons. This is a tron. This is a trine. Trex I don't have here busy today. So we got this open. Did we show all those pictures? Just go right through those pictures as I talk. Oh, good. So this little kid at Bloomingdale's in New York, nine years old, is playing with the space clusters. So he takes one out, and this is where it starts. This could be repeated by any one of you anywhere. So he puts one in, and sticks it. I went all over the country showing little kids that if you do this, and you do it a lot, You'll have fun. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> what do I do? <laughs> I you. you take this rod, you stick it in this hole. All right, well, wow, we got a bone. <laughs> Starts right away. Starts right away. It doesn't take long before things start to appear. The fundamentals of science should be able to be expressed in the language understood by everyone. Maybe we need to go back to the basics, forget that we know so much, and start all over. So, he put in another one. And then he put one connector on like this, and they, oh, look at my bone movie! Ah, that's fun. Didn't take long. So then, he did this, nine years old. Oh, look what I got. Fish. A fish. Then he did this. Oh, you're gonna love this trick. This is physics, folks. This hmm. is geometry. Everything is geometry. 
Everything has a volume, a defined volume. There is no such thing as empty space. We can fill it all. And we can do some pretty amazing things once we start exploring that space. Just imagine, just imagine how much surface I have on that Mickey ball. Go back to Mickey ball. If you go inside, the surface of the sphere is just so much. Think about how much surface I have within that ball. Lots. I don't know how much I'm not a mathematician. <laughs> I can add, subtract, yeah. multiply, and divide. When it comes to algebra, I thought it was a TV station in the Middle East. <laughs> then he, he said, oh, my fish. Look, it's the flying fish. Uh -huh. hey, far out, cool, dude. Then he took and he went like this. Glad you saved me for last there, uh, Greg. And he said, look, infinity. And then he took it like this. Amazing. Oh my goodness. <laughs> We're surprised. If we don't change the way from this, from right now, what I'm saying to you, if this doesn't change your point of view, then I can go home and maybe I'll take out my paints and start painting and I'll have to live the rest of my life in Laguna Beach, going to the beach every day, you know, just trying to get, make it the best I can as an abject failure. That's okay. I was gonna write a book, I was gonna call it How I Failed My Way to the Top. <laughs> or if this is the bottom, what took you so long to get here? At least so, you don't have tar balls in Laguna Beach. Hal, I like your trinkets, but I gotta <laughs> tell you. <laughs> All right, so we start putting tetrahedrons together. We get a bigger tetrahedron. And what happens is we're starting to define the space between the tetrahedrons, which is, here's four te tetrons. What's the space in between? An octahedron, but not like the regular octahedron. This would be an octatree. Because every space surrounded by another shape creates another shape. So you build this structure. You take 20 tetrahedrons of 10 tetrahedrons, a 10 set. You put 20 onto the face of this icosahedron. All the way around. Not north and south, east or west, left-handed, right-handed. You need an octopus. They only have eight hands. You need something more than an octopus. You need two octopuses that's missing four hands, if I did the math right. And you go left and you go right and you keep building it, you're gonna have, I don't care who you are, where you are, you're gonna come up with one thing. And that one thing is gonna continue. So we build that and now that sphere is really, really, really small, like I said, and I just start put, packing all those spheres together and boy, you've got, you got a lot of space in there to play with. All right, so we did space clusters. We've got a different dimension. What I found is that every structure exists in a different dimension, and at least four different dimensions. One is the one that we perceive where there's straight lines. So if we're seeing anything with straight lines, it's perceived. Nature does not work with straight lines. So if we're seeing straight lines, it's the hand of man. Now, I mean, if any of an archaeologist will tell you, if they find something really straight all along the line, they're going to know man had a hand. When we get into start getting into curves, this is a tetrahedron also, but this is a tetrahedron at rest, where the spinning are in this position. When they're in this position, we get this one, tetrahedron, tetri, and exploding, impl everything breathes. So I call it a tetra tetrine, inhaling, tetrax, exhaling, at rest, tetron, and perceived here. Well, now we've got a whole mess of shapes that we can start playing with. All right. These what I'm showing you here 